I recently finished reading Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis by Dr. George Jelinek. He's an emergency medicine doctor who recommends an evidence-based lifestyle program to treat multiple sclerosis. Today, I'm going to give you my review and my personal opinion. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber, and if you're new to the channel, I post videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Now, I should give a little bit of a conflict of interest statement, which is that even prior to reading this book, I actually give very similar advice to my patients, and what Dr. Jelinek recommends in this book is actually very similar to what I personally eat, or at least attempt to eat if I'm being good. So I may be a little bit biased in favor of this book. And if you're looking for a summary of his program, I posted that last week. I'll go ahead and put up a card here that you can click on. But just to give a brief summary, he recommends a whole foods, plant-based diet plus seafood. You can have grains and egg whites. He recommends supplementing with vitamin D and getting regular sunlight exposure. He also talks about exercise and meditation. And again, if you want more details, please go ahead and click that link. Now, I have to say, this is an incredible book. It's extremely well-researched, and like I said in the prior video, it reads almost like a review article. There are hundreds and hundreds of citations. Many of them I was already familiar with, but many of them that I wasn't familiar with. And he actually has 50 pages of this book just dedicated to citation. And even some of the topics like exercise and meditation, he really goes into detail about the evidence behind it and he really tries to back up his claims. That being said, he has a pragmatic approach, which I think is reasonable, where he says, listen, is there definitive proof for some of these recommendations? No, and he admits that for things like avoiding dairy, there isn't definitive evidence, but there is an association worldwide between dairy consumption and MS and a theoretical mechanism of action of how dairy could contribute to multiple sclerosis. So based on that and the findings in his holism study, which is the epidemiologic study that he himself does, he thought it was reasonable to advise avoiding dairy. Again, is this definitively proven? No, but I think for the most part, he makes reasonable recommendations. I could nitpick a few of the recommendations. I certainly don't think that uh, something like Cochrane's evidence-based reviews would support these recommendations because they're very, very strict in what they would allow. But I think most of his recommendations are fairly reasonable. And I think he's justified in giving recommendations given that they're extremely low in risk. And even if they don't specifically benefit MS, they're fairly likely to help you in other ways, at least in comparison to the typical American diet. And he talks about how everyone is so afraid of incredibly benign things like taking vitamin D. And he gives us an example in his book about how, you know, if you take this small amount of vitamin D, people are worried about how it might cause kidney stones. But if you literally take off your shirt and stand in the sun with a high UV index for five minutes, your own body will make the same amount of vitamin D. So how toxic can it really be? Now, I'll point out a few critiques. One is that he has a very strong reliance on his own study, the holism study, which is the health outcomes and lifestyle in a sample of people with multiple sclerosis. The problem with this study, if I were a reviewer for a journal, is that he sort of stacked the deck. In other words, a lot of people who went to his seminars, who read his book, who follow his program, they're kind of biased in favor of reporting that they have a really good diet and that they have a really good outcome. And that alone could bias the results. So I'd like to know what the results are if you exclude people who have a direct connection to George Jelinek, or who bought the book and who were in the program. That being said, one favorable thing that, about this study is that it includes people with a broad range of lifestyles. If you look at most Americans, almost all of them have a terrible lifestyle. So it's really hard to discriminate between good and bad. Whereas in his study, a lot of people have a terrible lifestyle, but some people have like an ultra healthy lifestyle. And so you can really make that comparison to people with a much, much different form of lifestyle and really bring out those smaller effects. Now, 
Another critique of the book is it's really, really technical. I mean, I'm a neurologist, an MS specialist. I specifically have an interest in nutrition and lifestyle. And even for me, a lot of this book was a bit painful to read. I like the diet section a lot, but, you know, reviewing the evidence about exercise, it's just kind of painful. It's like, yeah, I get it. Exercise is good. Okay, that's enough studies. You can stop. But I did read the whole thing cover to cover, and it's all good stuff. It's all very well researched. It's just a little bit tedious. So, Probably, if you're not very scholarly, you're not going to actually like to read this book. Now, he has a very good section on medications. And for someone who's not a neurologist, he's an emergency medicine doctor, he's very knowledgeable about the multiple sclerosis medications and the evidence behind them. And he goes into great detail talking about the studies, the efficacy, the safety issue. However, I would say this book is published in 2016, and I got to say, even since then, a lot has changed. There's several new drugs, several new studies, and the thinking about MS has changed, and there really is new evidence that early initiation of high-efficacy therapy may be a favorable approach. Um, A couple of things I could nitpick on, he talks about intravenous immunoglobin, IVIG, possibly being underused. I don't really agree with that, and I don't think it's as safe as he thinks it is. It can cause kidney disease, allergic reactions, and it can actually cause clotting. Personally, had a patient have a central retinal artery occlusion causing permanent blindness in one eye, whom I gave IVIG to. She did not have MS. She actually had a different condition called mononeuritis multiplex. Um, You know, he also talks about how you should kind of base the decision based on your disease activity. If you have very aggressive MS, you should consider a stronger medication. If you have mild MS, you should be more conservative. I'm not sure that's the best approach for everyone, just because as he acknowledges earlier in the book, you really can't predict the course of of MS. And so it's very difficult to make that kind of recommendation on block to the general population of people with MS. It's a very, you know, personal and difficult decision where you have to really more consider the risks and benefits than have a one size fits all approach. Now, again, overall, I really like this book. I would definitely recommend it. So if you're someone who's well educated, has a background in biology or just really likes to read and know about things and likes to see evidence, this is a great book. If you want to read anecdotes and inspiring stories, you're not going to find it in this book. It really is an evidence-based review. Uh, So, you know, please post in the comments below, have you read this book? Do you follow the program? And what are your results? I'd be interested to know. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post below.